Good afternoon, students. Today we'll be discussing about septoplasty. Okay, if you see in this picture, before the surgery, how this is seen. If you see, and after surgery, how it is seen. You can see how it is corrected. Okay. So we'll be discussing today about septoplasty. Now, this surgery can be done by open technique as well as endoscopic technique. So definitely, it is a conservative surgery as much as of septal framework is retained. So the aim is to retain the septal framework. So the open techniques are two, as you know, uh, septoplasty and SMR. But nowadays, we do septoplasty. So now we'll discuss about the indications, quadra indications, how the procedure is done. So everything we'll be discussing in this lecture, okay, and complication of septoplasty, okay. So now in indication, if you go to see, first and main thing is deviated nasal septum. So why this is important? Because deviated nasal septum causes many of the complaints, right? So nasal obstruction, recurrent headache, recurrent chronic uh, rhinosinusitis, COM, and so these are the conditions where in deviated nasal septum, the patient has got a lot of uh, difficulty in breathing and they come to us. Next indication is obstructive sleep apnea. Now in this, if you go to see in obstructive sleep apnea, what happens is the, because of DNS, there is a severe obstruction while sleeping and the patient is having difficulty in breathing so they will come with uh, obstructive sleep apnea. Now next is recurrent epistaxis with septal spur. Septorhinoplasty when we are doing we have to do a septoplasty. Hypophysectomy that is any surgeries So that means any surgeries where you do skull-based surgeries, we can go through doing septoplasty. Other is median neurectomy. Even in this, we can go. Next is when we are taking septal graft. So that time we have to do a septoplasty. Other indication is endoscopic sinus surgery. So these are the indications where we do septoplasty. Now let us discuss about the quadra indications. If you want, please write it down. Okay, students? So these are the quadra indications. Usually septoplasty we don't do in children. Acute upper respiratory tract infection, in this also we don't do. Medical problems, what the patient is facing, that time, bleeding diathesis, uncontrolled diabetes, uncontrolled hypertension, so in this conditions, we don't do a septoplasty. So these are the quadra indications of septoplasty. Now we will discuss about the procedure, what are the various steps of septoplasty. Okay. So the various steps what you see, if you see in that figure, what figure it is shown. So this is the procedure of open technique which is shown. Now in this, So it is usually done under local anesthesia with sedation. Okay, it is done under local anesthesia with sedation. So what local anesthesia we use is uh, infiltration of nasal septum with 2% dilocate and 1 to 1 is to 1 lakh epinephrine. So this is very important. So usually this surgery is done under local anesthesia with sedation. So, now it is usually preferred in adults. So what we do is in subperichondrial and subperiosteal planes, we inject through 26 gauge needle. So we use a very finer needle to infiltrate. Usually we go from caudal end to the posterior region. So the injection begins at caudal end and then goes posteriorly and includes both sides of the septum and floor around the maxillary crest. 
So this is very important how we give the injection. Then in cardiac patient, if a patient is cardiac, so it is very difficult for us to give adrenaline, right? So that time we use oxymetazoline, which is preferred over epinephrine. So this is especially for in cardiac patient. And maximum dose of xylocan what we inject is 4 to 7 milligram per kg body weight. So this should be your calculation for giving local anesthesia under septoplasm, for septoplasm. So sometimes what happens, the patient, if patient is not cooperative, then or if the patient is children above 14 years of age and there is a severe nasal obstruction and we have to operate to relieve the sleep apnea. For the, in that kind, what we use is general anesthesia with endotracheal intubation. So this is how we do, these are the various steps involved in uh, septoplastic. Now we will discuss about the septoplastic procedure. How to take the incision, how you elevate the flap, all this we will discuss now. So now if you see in this picture, this is the where, where we take the incision. So there are two types of incision, that is Freer's incision. There are many types of incision, but what we use is Freer's incision. And if there is a deviation around the posterior region also, and if we have to do a SMR, then we have to go for Killian sensation. So now if you see in this picture, the upper one is an endoscopic picture, which is showing the incision is taken, the Freya's incision is taken from up to down. Okay, so a curvilinear incision is taken from two to three millimeter and made above the caudal end of septal cartilage on the concave side. Now, how you take this incision? Now, if you see in this picture, this is the endoscopic original uh, procedure how we are doing, and this is the incision how we give, okay? So the septocolumnar incision is taken and made between the caudal margin of the septum and columnar. So the transfixation or any transfixation is also used in patients with caudal dislocation. So what do you mean by caudal dislocation students? It is a anterior dislocation of the septum. So in that time we take a transfixation or heavy transfixation incision. So I think in this picture is showing a proper incision how it is taken and how it is done so you will come to know now how so these are the other incisions what i'm showing over here so if you see here this is the killian's incision okay and this is the part where we take the heavy transfixation heavy transfixation incision so if you see if you join this all of the alarm till down then it will be a high and low transfixation incision. So that is how you take the all, all the full uh, transfixation incision can be taken. So these are the types of incision what we uh, get, in, what we do in septoplasty uh, procedures or a rhinoplasty procedure, whatever when we do, or uh, open rhinoplasty procedure. So that then we take a full Trans, uh, transfixation incisions. So you can see over here, this is the upper cartilage, upper lateral cartilage, and we are taking the incision near the columella. Okay, so this is the Killian's incision, which is behind, and Freyer's incision is taken over here. So this is how we take the incision in the septum. So now, how the flaps, once you take the incision, now the elevation of the flap is very important, right? So the bucopericondial flap is raised on the concave side. Actually, we are taking the incision on the concave side. So the bucopericondial flap is raised only on the concave side and creates a superior tunnel. So what is important is we have to create tunnel. Means you have to create a superior tunnel and a, a 
On the content side, actually, we are taking. So, Mukko periosteal flap is elevated on both the sides of maxillary crest and creates the inferior. So, what we do is usually we take the incision, we elevate the mucoperiosteal region. On the superior side and the inferior side, we create tunnel and so that the septum will be free. So, that is our aim. Then, after doing that, we will become uh, we'll, the superior and inferior on content side are joined together by cutting the fibrous tissue. There will be fibrous tissue when you approach there. So that would be cut with a sharp knife. So now once you have free this septal cartilage, now you have to free it from bomber and upper from it model plate. So for doing that, you have to see the maxillary crest properly. It has to be fractured and to realign the septal cartilage. So this is how you do. So now, if you go, the most of the uh, cartilage part you will be removing. And after the remarkation, if there is a bony, uh, this also, uh, deviation, then that also has to be corrected. Okay, so this is how we do. Now the deformed septal cartilage can be corrected by scoring, by cross-hatching, by mosilizing or shaving or wedge incision. So once you remove, there is a Barringer's knife, you can remove the cartilage with the Barringer's knife, it comes out properly. And what we do in septoplasty is in SMR, we remove the cartilage but we don't redeposit. If you want to redeposit that cartilage, do the correction, do moisturization, do shaving, and put it inside again so that it is a conservative. What is septoplasty? It is a conservative surgery. So we try to do that. So now, when it is resected and give the dorsal and caudal strength width width of 1 to 1 point centimeter excise cartilage can be judicially replaced that is what I was telling you we can replace it by correcting the deviation so that we will get a good support to the septum so this is how you do and where you will replace again in that mucopericondrial pocket did you understand students so this is how you do it so the septum is again so now, once you have corrected the maxillary crest, the, if the spur is there, spur is removed, all this, if it is corrected totally, then you will have to close it, isn't it? We have taken the uh, pericondrium, mucopericondrium, and then the tunnel, superior tunnel, inferior tunnel, everything we have created, we have removed the cartilage. Once we have removed or redeposited by correcting it, we have to take a suture. So what we do is we take the uh, mucosal, the septum is quilted with absorbable suture. So usually we take a absorbable suture that is vital now which is available or uh, 3-0 or 4-0 is used. So that we take a quilting suture throughout the septum and also the mucopericondrial region where we have on the caudal end, we will suture that. So this is how we do the surgery. Now if you see in this picture, you can see how it is done. Okay. So now, see this is the cartilage what you can see. So this is how you, this is the deviation of the uh, cartilage how it is seen. Now this is the cut part. We are cutting the deviated part and then again we are correcting it and we can deposit it if you want and this is how it is seen if you see in this picture. Okay. So now this is the endoscopic uh, septoplasty what I have shown over here. So in the if you see this is the deviated septum which, can, which is visible very well. Now if you see in the, the central part of the cartilage, what you are seeing here is deviated. So what we have to do is, we have to remove. So you can see this, this is the superior tunnel, this is the inferior tunnel and with the retractor and the, with the fairs, 
uh, retractor, we are retracting this mucoperitoneal region. And so this is the deviated septum, what we have to remove. And now if you see in this, we are cutting this, removing the center part which is deviated and again repositioning it and taking the suture. So this is how you do the septoplasty, okay? So we'll go to the next slide. Now what post-operative care we should take? Now once you've uh, done the surgery, you have taken the suture, then the next thing what you do is, we apply an antibiotic ointment over there and we put either, we pack the nostril either by a ribbon gauze or nowadays the technology is changed. So you get a medicine pack. That packs can be kept there. So it is easy to keep and patient is more comfortable with that. So we apply the antibiotic and we keep a medicine pack on both the nostrils. Why we keep? Because we want to avoid any complication later. So we'll be discussing about the complications so of the septoplastic, what are the complications uh, is there. So we'll be discussing that also. Now what post-operative care we will take? Now first thing is once you keep the uh, nostril pack, you should tell the patient that he has to do mouth breathing. Isn't it? Because both the nostrils are packed. So that we have to tell the patient and we should observe in and ask them to sit in semi-sitting position. So what happens in semi-sitting uh, position? The bleeding or if there is any ooze will stop and also swell. So this is very important. Then the patient about the time. The patient um, uh, also explain the patient that they have to take soft diet orally. Okay, so a uh, soft diet in the first two days is given. Why it is given soft diet? Because we don't want any bleeding postoperatively. So mastication or severe uh, chewing can cause bleeding. So to avoid that, we should tell the patient to minimize mastication and it will prevent uh, bleeding. So we ask the patients to take a soft diet, okay? So already the patient is having mouth breathing, so you should advise the patient properly. Now we should give uh, antibiotic coverage for five to seven days. Analgesic should be given, one anti-allergic should be given, so because why anti-allergy? Because there is an irritation as, as much as we have kept the pack. So we don't want much of irritation, so we have to give uh, analgesic to control pain, antibiotics for five to seven days. And usually we remove the nasal pack within 24 hours. So if there is a, a pack can be kept up to 48 hours, but if you want, you can, it is always be practiced removing the um, pack within 24 hours. So this will finish our, uh, this thing. Once this is over, after 24 hours, the pack is removed and then we start with a nasal irrigation and nasal washes and we advise the patient to use decongestion nasal drops. So patient is instructed to avoid strenuous exercise and trauma to the nose. So this by discharging after five days, you should tell the patient that patient uh, to avoid strenuous exercise and trauma to the nose. So light activities are allowed in the first week, but full activities after one week to two weeks. So this is how you should tell the patient. Now if you see, we will discuss about the complication because complication of septoplasty is very important. Okay, students, it is very important. You should know the complications of septoplasty. So what are the complications what we see? So now if you see in first picture, of the first thing is MNH. It can be during the surgery or intraoperatively or postoperatively, MNH can be there. So that you have, that you have to see. Second thing is, 
or septal hematoma. Okay, septal hematoma and septal abscess. So if you see in this picture, this is a hematoma, what is shown leading to septal abscess. So if you see in this picture, this is septal abscess. What is then if that is which is a complication of uh, septoplasty? So if there is a septal abscess, then you have to do a incisional drainage of the septal abscess. So this is very important. So if we are injuring when we are uh, doing a septoplasty, if you go more posteriorly and if you are injuring the mucoperiosteal uh, flap or if you are removing lot of bones, there can be perforation. So perforation of septum is a chronic surgery after uh, seven days or eight days you can see that perforation. So in this picture if you see, you can see the perforation of what is shown. So this is very important uh, complication. Other thing is you see after seven days or after four days you must watch for sinicky. Why sinicky? Because there is a uh, injury while operating, there is an injury on the mucoperiosteal region. We are packing, we can lead to injury to the lateral wall as well as the side. So uh, that is near the inferior domain. So when there is trauma or we are keeping a pack, so what happens is sinicky formation will be there. So to avoid the sinicky formation, that is how we give a nasal irrigation. So nasal irrigation, sinicky, uh, uh, is very important to avoid sinicky, okay? So this is the picture what is showing sinicky. So you can see the, the the septal region and the mucosa from the lateral side, okay? So both are coming and in between. So this is the part of the inferior dominant that is coming and getting joint and it is getting blocked. So that will cause obstruction to the no state. Then other uh, deformity is what we see. If we remove lot of septum, that is a cartilage, uh, bony cartilage and cartilaginous part and bony part, so what happens is the upper part, you can see this, this is a saddle of a nose deformity, what is seen. You can see over here, this is the saddle deformity. See, this side is totally dropped in. That is because of excess of removal of the septum. So you have to be very careful while this doing the surgery. This complication should not happen. So if it happens, again we will have to do a septovaniplasty. So you have to be very careful how to avoid the complications. Now, the next complication is refracted corona. What happens is we are taking the incision in the caudal region uh, for a caudal um, dislocation. So that time what happens, excess of columnar bone is removed and then you get a retracted columnar. Can you see over here? See this is this region. So this A should be avoided. So excess of removal should be avoided. We have to be very careful. Otherwise the patient will come to this. Again this patient will need a uh, retracted, uh, will need a rhinoceptorhinoplasty. Other thing is, if you go high up, so if you go high up from here, there is a cavernous sinus over here, right? So if you go high up and remove dangerous area, that is dangerous area, because that bone, if you remove, there can be a CSF leak. That is, so you have to be very careful. Or if you remove the septum, all of the cartilage is removed, there can be a flapping of nasal septum. A CSF leak can be there, flapping of sinica already told. And lastly, as usual, toxic shock syndrome. So that can come in surgery complications. Now, what cautions we should take after septoplasty surgery? What will be the caution? If you want, you can write it down. So now in this, after the septoplasty or before closing the septoplasty, to avoid all these complications, what you should do? First thing is, before closing the septoplasty surgery, look for the following checklist. First is axilla of 
middle turbinate should be should become easily visible on rhinoscopy or cystoscopy examination so this is very important five areas of septum causing nasal obstruction so on your checklist once you are doing the septoplasty a surgeon should always remember what you have to see which areas and how it is seen to avoid nasal obstruction so five areas of septum which causes nasal obstruction are caudal septum dorsal septum middle septum posterior bony septum and maxillary crest so this is very important and lastly repair mucosal tear replace excise cartilage to prevent septal perforation see what happens is while doing the septoplasty we remove the cartilage right whole if for example if whole of the uh, cartilage is removed what happens it will become flappy there is nothing inside so once and if you tend to become if there is a severe deviation so while elevating the mucopericonduit region there can be a perforation or tear in the not perforation actually tear in the mucopericonduit region or mucosal layer of the region so what you have to do is you replace little cartilage and suture it so that we will avoid the perforation of nasal septum so this is very important so this is very important so always before closing you see for mucosal tears and if it is there you take a suture or uh, operate accordingly as you know you know what we have to do so we can do it okay so now what are the so as i told you so this will finish your open septoplasty so now i would like to tell you something about endoplastic septoplasty nowadays we are also doing endoplastic septoplasty okay endoscopic sorry not endoplasty endoscopic so in this endoscopic septoplasty it gives us a good uh, this thing so we will discuss the procedure is same actually same like uh, septoplasty only thing is that for septoplasty we are using endoscope that is zero degree okay so this is how we do a uh, endoscopy so what are the advantages see open technique also we can see properly we can do everything but what are the advantages of endoscopy rather than open technique so we will discuss that now the advantages are it is definitely it is a high illuminated isn't it the scope so when we see under scope it gives a high magnification so high magnification is given improved ergonomics are there better assess and vision of posterior areas see when we go we put the scope we can see the posterior area very nicely but in open technique what happens the posterior area many times we find it very difficult to see the posterior area is body area right and in front is the lateral cartilage so we find it many times um, uh, it is not visible so better access and vision of posterior areas limited dissections can be done so once you uh, introduce the endoscope we can clearly dissect it so limited dissection will be there so what is the disadvantage okay now all these are very good uh, like this but what happens is in caudal area when we are operating so in caudal area what happens when we put the scope it's very caudal isn't it so when we put the scope what happens the anterior side can now be seen what is caudal defect that is the anterior deviation of septal uh, septum so in this difficulty in addressing anterior and caudal defect is very difficult because the anterior dislocation is very anteriorly and we find it very difficult with the scope because scope has to go inside then only it will be visible so what are the limitations of endoscopic septoplasty now we we'll discuss that so the limitations are they are limited to the access as i told you anterior if you have to do a anterior dislocation correction then it is very difficult to do with endoscopy so limited access and manipulation of dorsal and caudal septum septal angle and nasal spine 
So this is where we are finding it difficult for endoscopy. So deviation in these areas needs an open approach for following measures. See, I have written over here. So why, what are the deviation of dorsal septum, man septal angle? So conservative shaving and extended spreader graft. So this is very important for open technique. Deviation of posterior septal angle. So if it is there, conservative shaving, repositioning of the cartilage or, or uh, nasal spine is very important. So that can be done by open technique. So caudal deviation of septum, again, it is very difficult with endoscope. So septal pattern or caudal septal extension, graft, tongue in groove technique or reposition. So these are the areas which need an open approach. So, so this is the advantage of the open approach. So now I think you are understood what are the limitations of endoscopy, how it is used, how uh, you can go for. Now here I put a slide about septoplasty and SMR. See, in before we used to do SMR, then the technology came and we started doing septoplasty. More of conservative treatment, okay? So now for this, you should know what is septoplasty, what is SMR. Septoplasty is a conservative, but SMR is destructive. Why destructive? Because we remove the anterior cartilage as well as the posterior cartilage, understood? So this is, and septoplasty, of course we can do, of course we are saying that we are, we don't do, try to avoid in children. But when there is a severe obstruction or CPAP, apnea syndrome, we can do in child. But if we have to do a SMR, we don't do below 17 years of age. So this is very important. Then it is ideal for anterior deviation because when there is caudal deviation or caudal dislocation, we can easily go and tackle the columnar area. And SMR, it is good for anterior as well as the posterior deviation. So that is why in septoplasty we take Freya's incision as well in SMR we take Killian's incision. I hope you all understood what is Killian's, what is Freya, so this is how we do. Now mucopericondial flap, how we do in septoplasty? We elevate from the one side and go and we do only from one side. But in SMR we go from both the sides, from this and this and we take it, okay? That means from anteriorly and posteriorly we go from both the sides. So risk of the tearing of the flap is very low because we are going from only one side for septoplasty, so risk is very low. But if you see in SMR it is high. Why? Because there can be mucosal tear because we are going bilaterally from both the sides. So, so elevation of flap is very easy in septoplasty. It is very hard. If you go to see risk of septal hematoma, because since we are going till the posterior bilaterally, so there can be a hematoma in SMR. Then cosmetic deformity and complications are uncommon in septoplasty, but in SMR it is very common. So rhinoplasty can be combined with rhinoplasty by extending the prayer incision. That means what I was telling you all was hemi-transfixation, total transfixation, full, that is full transfixation can be taken when we are doing a septoplasty. But in SMR it can be combined, cannot be combined with rhinoplasty. Okay? So I think you all understood what is the septoplasty and SMR. So this will finish our so this will finish our uh, lecture today. So I think once again I will go back and tell you the procedure, how it is uh, done. Huh? Ma Ajun Dhamitra Bolaar Pagi. Ma Kaya Tolpar. Thank you.
पेंडिंग वगैरह इंटरव्यू आते हैं हाँ तो कंपटीशन में उतर जाते हैं अरे ये तो तो so as you saw again I just want to tell you about the complications because we have discussed about the now you know uh, about the septoplasty about SMR so I want to discuss again this complication why because now you understood what is SMR and what is septoplasty so in septoplasty as I told you we take on one side uh, incision and uh, we elevate the flap on your one side in SMR we elevate on the both the sides right so if you go to see the elevation I want to I would like to go and show you all again see this is the incision what I wanted to tell you all. so now when you take a clear incision so this will be the this okay so this is the columnar stud so what this Killian's incision is taken usually for uh, SMR okay so Killian incision is taken for SMR that you have to remember and Freer's incision is taken on this columnar region that is from here to here that is around 2 to 3 millimeter from there so now hope you understood about the incision about septoplasty and SMR. Why I have come again because this is, this is a routine surgery what we do. So you should realize okay, how we take the incision of Killian's and Freya's incision. So Freya's incision is taken at the caudal end 2 to 3 millimeter behind and near about 5 millimeter uh, the Killian's incision is taken. So first thing you should know that and when we are so when we are taking this incision, so hemitransfixation and all this, see this is hemitransfixation. So we take the prayers incision over here. Again I am showing, we take the prayers incision over here. So we can continue that as a hemitransfixation or a low high or low transfixation we can do it. So this is very important. But in Killian's, nothing can be done because we are taking behind, behind on the septum. So it is not possible. So this difference I wanted to show you uh, when we were discussing about. Now if you see in this picture, again I am going to this picture. This is a septoplasty picture where again we are showing Dariki uh, Sanubhava. Uh, again, I am showing the deviation. Okay, while I am showing this deviation, this is a uh, deviation which is uh, seen clear cut in this endoscope. See this, this is endoscopic, this is CT. So you can see in this. So when we are showing this, what we are doing is we are cutting this septum from here. That is the deviated part. So the central part of the cartilage. So if you see this is the whole of the cartilage and the central part is deviated. So what we do is we remove it again. Why I am showing you after finishing this whole lecture, why I am showing you again is septoplasty is one surgery we always do in ENT, especially in the nose. Almost every day we are doing this surgery. So you have to be very perfect or you should know all the things what we do in septoplasty. So again, what we do, we have to remove this deviated part, isn't it? So now you can see the cut and how this central part, this arrow is showing the central part and we have to remove this, okay? So while removing, now once we took the cut, this side also it is elevated, once it uh, we insert a balinger over here and then we remove, go behind, go behind. Okay, from the this central part has to be removed and then finally we remove. And then again we correct 
and this septum and this is reposition. Okay, so this is how again and again I'm showing you this because you should know what exactly we do with this. So this is a picture, the upper part it is showing how we do. So now again if I go to the complication, now you must have understood when you get a uh, hematoma or a septal perforation. As I told you, in ASMR what happens is we go deep posteriorly, posterior side of the septum. So that's why and there can be a mucosal tear or if the deviation is uh, too much, then we can go behind and we can go and so when we are going far behind, there is a chance of mucosal tear. Okay, so mucosal tear is there, then we have to correct that. As I told you, we have to take the suture and finish it off. So this is how we do. I hope you all understood this. Thank you very much. If there is any query, you can ask me. Yeah,